What's up guys, it's Hudson here from Hudson's Tech bringing you guys a brand new video and series and in today's video we're going to be jumping into Premiere Pro CC 2014. Basically what I'm going to show you guys is the very basics and the layout today and then later down the line I'll show you guys specific things that you may request in the comments like how to do um, certain effects how to apply things how to uh, how to color correct and how to color grade and how to cut clips a certain way and add transitions and whatever you guys uh, want to know I'll be doing some of those requested ones and very popular ones as well so you kinda get a good mix um, I'm not sure how many of these we're gonna be doing but as long as you guys enjoy it and find it useful I will do my best to bring them to you guys so before we start it though I'm not a pro editor at all um, I'm learning a lot of things every day just like you guys are uh, so take it easy in the comments um, I may not know everything there are a lot of ways to do each and in, in every um, action in programs like this um, so there's not really one way to do everything just to get that out of the way but let's jump into the program we've got Premiere Pro CC 2014 right here um, and what it's going to show you first, if you've never opened it before, is a welcome screen. It'll say, Welcome to Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2014. And you've got a lot of different options that you can execute right away. Uh, you can turn off this welcome screen if you want. And if you do, it'll just open your most recent project that you've been working on. You can sync settings from older versions. You can open a recent item. You can create a new one. And you can learn as well. Alright, so let's just say we're going to create a new project. I tried doing this earlier and I, and I was uh, unsuccessful. So we'll call this one the tutorial.1. Uh, and it's going to save into a pre-made folder. If you want to save it to a different um, hard drive or a scratch disk or something, you can browse here and do that. Uh, you've got your scratch disk here. You can change as well. For this specific one, I'm using my C drive, but normally I use the X drive, which is my Adobe Scratch Disk, um, and that's just a offset um, SSD, which gives me really fast performance. But um, my C drive will work fine for this tutorial. You can choose if you want to use GPU acceleration if you have an NVIDIA-based graphics card uh, using CUDA, or if you just want to use the software using your um, cores on your CPU. Uh, you've got your video display format, your audio display format, your capture format, and display the project item names in the label for all instances. You can have that checked if not. I believe it comes unchecked already, and so I'm just going to leave it that way. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to jump into our basic window here. Uh, we've got lots of stuff going on. Um, each thing is completely customizable, and so we'll get to that in a second, but this is what it's going to look like right when you start off. Very basic, not much going on. Um, well, I did say there was a lot going on, but really, right now, there is not. Um, so, anyways, so we can come in here, and we're going to go to, um, uh, to look at our top toolbar. We've got our file, which has our new, our open project, all that stuff, our save, our uh, dynamic link, anywhere. Those are certain things specific to Adobe. You can link to a speed grade, which speed grade is this program here, which allows you to color grade multiple clips and things. It's very nice for that. Um, uh, we've got your uh, import, import batch list, recent file, export, project settings manager, and your exit. Um, our edit, which obviously, you know, is 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 very familiar if you've used any sort of word processing program or Photoshop a lot of it will look um, very similar our clip which we've got special options here as well you can rename you can video options and audio options you can analyze things speed duration remove effects uh, insert overwrite replace footage these kinds of things our sequence settings uh, render effects um, and match frame add edit um, lift, extract, all these things, marker, and you can kind of go through here and see. But once we get to our window, this is what I was talking about that you can customize and add different windows to your um, to your layout. So say for for instance we want an effects specific tab, we can click the effects here, and it's going to open up down here. But if you you know if you got the little menus here, but if you want you can grab this and move it anywhere. You could even have it in a standalone window um, if you if you really wanted to. Uh, but we're just going to leave that down here where it was, uh, and it just kind of makes it easy um, in there. But uh, so, yeah, that's how the window works, and you can take things away if you'd like, and you can add things and all that. So it's very customizable. They make it really easy. Uh, you can save workspaces um, and import them. And then also, if you'd like, 
you can uh, go back to other ones. So if you're doing color correction specifically, you can open the color correction uh, tab here, and it's got all sorts of stuff pre-made for you to kind of help you out with that. Uh, but what we're going to do in, in this instance is to stick with the editing that's basic to the CC 2014. Um, so anyways, now we got our source tab up here, which is going to show you, um, these are both of our video windows. Here's our source, which we're going to go scrub through our clips, find what we want, and drag that into our timeline, which we'll get to in a second. That's what this is for. You can also do that with audio. Uh, you got the effect controls here, uh, which when you're, when you're scrubbing through um, your timeline, and you've got certain effects on things you can set the parameters uh, I've got your audio track mixer which right now there's there's nothing in but this will allow you to uh, you know self-explanatory to, to mix your tracks in your audience and you can uh, play with those settings as well uh, your audio clip mixer and your metadata uh, which the metadata will just have all the information based on selected clips at the point in time so um, this kind of stuff will populate as soon as you drag and import items which we'll get to uh, in just a second this whatever is on your timeline and you are currently selected will show up in this window here so this is going to be your preview window we've got your project here so once we create a sequence it'll pop up here and populate the timeline um, that sequence will dictate what the frame rates and the resolution will be for the entire project uh, and, and in this window you can uh, import things and add things and you can uh, change the different thumbnails and scrub through footage. You got your media browser which is extremely helpful. This is one of the ways to import footage. You can go through your hard drives and pick things that you'd like and drag those into your source, put them in your project, put them into your timeline and whatever you'd like. You can even add, so say there's a specific folder that you want to the project that you can, um, you can import the folder itself into your project which is kind of cool there uh, you've got your info which is sort of like the metadata it's just gonna let you know a bit about the clip and sort of tell you what that's like and your your um, your frame rates and things like that your effects here which has your presets and your audio effects the transitions the video effects you can go through them you can search them so say for instance we want a crossfade um, you know, you can look for the uh, the cross zoom, the iris cross, uh, the exponential fade, things like that. You can just kind of go through them, and then as soon as you delete that, it just closes all those tabs, which is really cool. Uh, you've got your markers, which you can set to specifically help you find footage that you're looking for, and your history, and you can go through things and undo, which is really cool. You can change how many things you can undo um, in the preferences. So what we're going to do is create a new sequence. So we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to New and Sequence and create the new sequence. What's going to pop up first is going to be uh, an available preset based on the type of footage that you're using in the uh, in the video. If, say if you're using a RED camera, you've got those options. If you're using HDV 1080, you can do that, 720, 30. All the frame rates and the resolutions. If you're using a special uh, AVC HD, which is a lot of Sony cameras, you can do that as well. If you go into your settings, you can specify it based on, um, you know, if they don't have a preset already. And then you've also got the tracks, which you can, you can add and remove audio tracks uh, based on what you want to do. So, for instance, um, when I do voiceovers, I want it to be in my... Uh, just because the way that um, my audio encoding works. So if I go to add a track here, you can do the track type and add mono, and then I'm going to go ahead and name this to voice over uh, so that when I do voiceovers, I know exactly what this is going to, to, to be specified for. Then I can have my main um, up there or whatever you'd want to do, your audio one. Um, and then you can just hit OK and it'll create the track for you. Now, what you've got is your sequence created. You can see that here. And if you are to go into this tab, you can see the frame rate and the media start and the end, the duration. You've got all sorts of information. You got your uh, 400 or 4,800 or 48,000, excuse me, hertz stereo. You got the video info. All of this uh, based on your sequence. You can go back to this mode here. Uh, but now we're going to import footage. Um, so the, there's a lot of ways to do this. You can right click in your project and go to import. You can go to your media browser like I explained before. And we go to, uh, for me, if I were to import footage, I'd go to my B drive, which is my, my media footage. Uh, we'd go to the videos and the unedited footage. We'd pick, uh, let's go to game clips and uh, Call of Duty. Uh, if we go to the Advanced Warfare and one of the most recent videos that I had, uh, you can see that that's here and you can sort of scrub through that. Uh, what I would do if you wanted to drag the entire footage in to the, um, 
the timeline it's very simple and you would just do that here and you can specify which tracks you want it to be on but I don't want to do that because say there's only a special part of that piece of footage I want in my video so I'm gonna drag that into my source monitor that will open it up here um, and sometimes based on uh, the resolution and the bitrate and things it might take a little while you'll see it conforming media down here just let that do its thing it's just taking a bit of time and you might not hear audio and stuff don't worry uh, but here is the footage that we want, um, and so we're able to scrub through that here. You're able to, uh, using the I and the O on your keyboard, set the in and the out, and then once you do that and you find what you want, then you can drag that in to um, your sequence. Now what it's going to say is this clip specifically does not match the sequence settings. You'll be like, oh my gosh, why did that happen? Specifically, I did this on purpose so that you can show. You can change the sequence settings to match this clip specifically which is really cool because that way it'll it will um, it will you know customize it based on the type of footage that you're using or you can keep existing settings I'm gonna hit change sequence settings that way um, my clip looks like it's supposed to um, and, and that's really good and everything like that and then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag us down here so we can see it my waveform and sort of what we're dealing with um, but uh, yeah, so that's our clip and then we can take this and drag it around But so so far we have a bit of footage in our timeline This is looking pretty populated really fast like I said in the beginning it didn't look too complicated But now it does so things are starting to fill up and we can sort of see a lot more going on There's lots of different tools and things that you can use uh, When you're working with a clip and so real quickly I'm going to show you some uh, super easy ones to get familiar with you have your cut tool, uh, which you can just hit C on the keyboard, and that will give you the option to cut the clip. So if we go, if we hit V, we go back to our mouse. So say this is the part that I wanted to cut. I didn't get that in my, um, or when I was scrubbing through the clip here. Uh, and then I can just individually uh, splice it there, and then I can go to the next section. Say the audio was better there. Um, and or whatever and then I'm cutting that and then I can uh, select this and delete it um, After that I can drag these two clips together, but you know, that's a jump cut. I don't want to jump cut I want it to go together nicely. So I'm gonna go to my uh, my video transitions here um, And I'm gonna go to dissolve and let's say we want a cross dissolve We want this to look really nice together and here. Let's actually before we drag that on we can um, Scrub this so that it, it looks a little bit better. We can sort of see what we're doing um, and I can drag this on both of them so it's going to dissolve both clips. And so let's watch that and see what happens. Only um, nice, like, quads that you would take hunting with. Yeah, so, you know. So as you can kind of see, uh, that's what that's what we get with the cross dissolve. That's just a, like an idea that you, way you guys know what sort of uh, you can do and uh, just some extremely basic things. But so we've got this we got this stuff that we can work with. Um, say that uh, this audio was you know a little bit too loud or whatever. If we went to our effect controls selected on this clip, we can see uh, different things that we have based on uh, the the preferences and abilities that are built in to this specific clip alone. So if we wanted to add more things and more parameters to play with, we could do that with our audio effects and transitions, but it's just the basic clip on its own. There's not much going on. So say the volume was a little bit too loud um, and we wanted, you know, right, uh, Bef or right uh, during the fade, we wanted it to sort of fade in a little bit. Uh, so if we were to hit a keyframe on our, um, or I hit that on the bypass, excuse me, on our uh, audio level, uh, then you'll see that keyframe pop up right there. If we were to select that keyframe and change uh, this volume to, or we, we actually want to leave that to zero, but if we were to scrub back here, uh, we'll add another keyframe and make this one say like minus 20. That way, um, you know, when we go from clip to clip, that this one will sort of fade in and sound a little bit nicer. I don't know. Just an idea just to show you the keyframes and stuff, how they work. Um, but anyways, yeah, you can you can even select the keyframe, say, you know, that was a silly idea, whatever, delete it. And then delete this one as well. That way you're left with an untouched clip um, and you can do that as well. But if... 
you didn't want to do it that way, you can go through your history um, and go through and sort of, you know, fix things like, oh, I shouldn't have edited that parameter. I want to go back here. I don't want those keyframes. We're going to go back to the apply the transition. That was the last thing that we did that I liked. So I'm going to leave that. And you can see how many undos you have here. As soon as you do something new, those will be completely deleted. So be careful with what you're doing. But um, that is the pretty much the basics of Premiere Pro. I just want to show you some extremely, extremely basic stuff. Maybe get your feet wet in the program. If you guys would like to see a little bit more, you have a specific thing that you'd like to see, you already know how to use it, this video wasn't useful, whatever, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. I was just kind of throwing some stuff together. Uh, if this wasn't enough and you want to see a much more basic tutorial, let me know in the comments down below as well, and I'll see what I can do on that front. But if you guys enjoyed this and you found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up down below. It's very much appreciated. Subscribe if you're new. Share this with your friends if you think it could help them, and I would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.